Okay, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to my Thursday live. I will wait a moment for everybody to start coming in. Hope you are having a fabulous um, half term for those of you in the UK. Um, it's really strange, actually, isn't it? It's half term when um, your children are growing up <laughs> or grown up. Um, so it feels a bit weird. So if you are kind of enjoying some family time, I hope you're having a, having a fabulous week. And if you're like me, that um, it's kind of like a normal week for us, um, then, you know, come on in, join us today. Do let me know if you are here live, pop a hey in the comments. We've got a great one for you today, a really great one. Um, with it being Halloween at the weekend, um, I am just going to be testing you, asking you some, um, you know, are you still holding on to some of the kind of the ghosts from the past? So stuff from the th the past that is still holding you back from the life that you want to lead. So if you are here live, do pop a hey in the comments. And if you're catching up on replay, which I know loads of you catch up on replay, do put a hashtag replay too so that I know that you're here and I can kind of um, answer any questions that you've got. So I can't see any comments at the moment. So again, if you are here live, do pop a hey in so I know comments is working because it's not always uh, working. And um, if you've got questions then as we go along, do pop them in the comments. Um, so like I said, as we are approaching the end of October, it's Halloween at the weekend and we're moving into that last part of the year. This is, hey, yes, so the comments are working. Hey, Marlene. This is a really good time for you to reflect on kind of what's worked for you so that you can do more of the stuff that's really working. But it's also a great time to let go of the stuff that's not serving you anymore, especially if it has been stuff that you've been holding on to for a long time. And maybe you don't even know that it's that that's holding you back. But as we go through today, I'm hoping that um, you know, yay, hey, uh, I hope that you will then see, pick up some tips for you to be able to, one, identify what that actually is and the impact that it's actually having on you so that you can actually do something about it. Because once you actually can let go of what's limiting you, you can really start trusting in you and you know really taking your business, your life forward, which is obviously what we, we want. Um, so, First of all, I was, I was, when I was writing this today, I was thinking, I was a, probably about 46 <laughs> before I realised that I'd actually been limiting myself. I didn't actually know that, that I was putting my own caps on things. Um, you know, I'd, I'd had, hey Jill, I'd had a really great career. Don't get, you know, I was a HR director in my kind of my previous life. Now I, you know, again, I wasn't at the, I wasn't, a, you know, HR director for a massive, massive company, although, you know, we've got a fair number of employees, um, but, you know, in the hundreds, but just not in the thousands. But, and it was certainly a high level. But I hadn't realised quite how much I'd actually limited my own life, my career, my wealth, you know, relationship, everything. Um, or even how I did it. I didn't know that. And a lot of it was that, you know, and I think this is probably, and let me know in the comments, but I think a lot of people just feel, and it was the same for me, that I just had no choice. That everything that I had was exactly what I was meant to have. That um, I, you know, my circumstances were what they were. I had no choice in that. And it was only when I became fully aware of the possibility that I'd actually been holding myself back and that I was the only one that could change that, that things really began to change. And in NLP terms, we kind of, I know that I got out of the passenger seat and became the driver, as we say in NLP. So I'd been, you know, I was doing well, I was coping okay, but there was an underlying frustration that something was really missing and I knew that I wanted something more. So again, let me know if this is something that is resonates with you today. 
Um, and like I said, I like these sessions to be quite interactive. So please feel free to pop your questions in and I, you know, and I can kind of, you know, this is your time for, you've got me you, as your coach um, for free as we go through this. So do feel free to utilize that. I'm ha I, I, you know, happy to answer questions. But I knew there was something more. And I suddenly realized that I would never reach where I really wanted to get to at the rate that I was going. And that's kind of like a really rude awakening because when you suddenly realize that you actually are the creator of everything and including the results that you actually get instead of kind of being the victim of things that just happen to you. You know, I don't believe that anything just happens to us. Um, that you actually shape your own life by the thoughts and beliefs and actions that you've got. When you become aware of that, it can have a really phenomenal impact. So we're going to go through that today for you. Because, you know, you can appreciate it that if you've made your life the way it has been so far, you've also got the tools to make it even better. So the first thing is to actually discover how you've actually been limiting yourself so far and take responsibility for what's happened so far. Now this isn't suddenly about kind of berating yourself and blaming yourself or anything that's happened in the past. We are where we are. You know, I absolutely believe that we are who we are from, you know, our past. You know, that's created us. So it's not about kind of berating ourselves or or anything like that. This is about acknowledging what's happened in the past, but not letting it define who you are now so that you can actually let it go. And this is where we burst into song, isn't it? Let it go. <laughs> I won't do it because my husband's in the other room today, so I won't burst into song today. But the temptation is there, isn't it? The minute you go, let it go. Um, so once we are willing to become much more aware of how we limit ourselves with our negative thoughts and beliefs, we're able to start seeing our past and its effects of, you know, the effects of the past in a new light. And that's when we free ourselves to be able to move forward. So your past is just not a reflection of who you are now or who you've got the ability to be. You know, I absolutely believe that everybody inside, you know, has got inside of us the potential, limitless potential to do whatever you want to be and do. But until you let go of kind of the stuff that's holding you back, it's going to continue to hang around your neck like a big weight. And it will stop you stepping into the true you, the you you are meant to be. Because again, I believe that we're all meant to be something else, you know, that we have our true potential. So I'm going to give you an example of, um, you know, this is from one of my current clients. This is one of my current clients. And, and actually she came to me she came to me with some you know, career stuff and some business stuff, but she also had a real unhappiness. What sort of, through our sessions, she had a real unhappiness that stemmed from her relationships with men. Um, and she was continually, continually getting herself into the same sort of relationships over and over and actually expecting different results. <laughs> you know, it's a definition of madness, isn't it? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting something different. Um, so she was getting herself into these relationships that weren't wa working out for her. She was attracting the same kind of guys. She was getting into relationships with the same types of guys and they just weren't working for her. So we did some some work, you know, and that's the great thing about, you know, the sort of coaching that I do. I kind of work on a holistic principle that, you know, it's not just business, it's not just career, it's not just life, you know, it's a holistic approach. And actually different areas of our life affect different areas of our life, you know, you know it's like a, you know, kind of that domino effect. So this was clearly something that was affecting her in her life. So we dug really deeply into the past. And she spoke about, you know, when we kind of went back in the past, she's talked about, you know, the school disco. She remembered a school disco. And it was the first time that the girls were able to ask the lads 
to the disco rather than it being the other way around. If you remember at school, if you, you know, you're my sort of era, you had to wait. If you were a girl, you had to wait to be asked by the boy to go to, to the disco. But this time around, she, you know, uh, it was something that she was, uh, you know, she was able to ask this lad to the disco. And she really fancied John, his name was John, she said his name was John for a long time and he was one of, he was out of the football team. So he was one of the, you know, the popular lads as they call it. She'd fancied him for a long time but she kept putting off asking him to the dance, to the disco. So she kind of was planning how she was going to bump into him really casually and, and then, you know, just, just, you know, casually ask him to go to the disco with her. But it never happened and she kept putting it off and pu putting it off. Finally, she plucked up the courage to ask him, you know, Are you, will you come to the disco with me? And his reply was, oh, no, thanks. Sorry. And she was really humiliated by that and she was really embarrassed and she actually said she knew at that point she swore to herself that that would not happen to her again. She told herself she wasn't, you know, she wasn't good enough to go out with John and she wasn't going good enough to let go of any, let go out with anyone. And she wasn't going to let anyone let her make the mistake again of presuming she was good enough to get one of the good ones. She, she actually said, I knew my place that day. I knew my place. So every time then she met a new man, she brought, metaphorically speaking, of course, she brought John along. You know, he was in her head. And her relationships were all then based on, I'm lucky to have anyone, let alone the one I really want. And again, as we delve deeper and deep, deeper, she realised how, you know, her life in general, she settled for less than what she wanted. And we had to really shift that limiting perception that she had to a really empowering one. And I, you know, I'm really pleased to say that she's actually happily married now to her and soulmate she calls, so her, she's married to Dan, um, they've got two kids now, and she calls him her soulmate. Now she admits that if we hadn't have done the work, she would have thought he was too good for her. And, you know, why would he have been interested in me? So she wouldn't have actually even got to the point of kind of going out with him. Because you see, we get what we focus on. We get what we focus on. So as long as you think of yourself as like in her case, a rejected woman, you will be disappointed in love. Or if you're in business, that you think that you are not good enough to run your own business and that you're not gonna be successful, then guess what? You won't be successful. Or if you think that you will never be able to generate the money that you want to make, you won't if you keep actually focusing on that. I do a lot of work on, on you know, on the kind of, our limiting beliefs and um, you know how we how this all works when we're coming from a black place or an abundant place you get what you focus on so the results in your life are a perfect match for your expectations so what you expect to happen is exactly what you get that will happen and you know the results that you get in your life are the biggest indicator of what your limiting belief actually is because if you kind of go, no, I don't have any limiting beliefs, you know, I think I'm good enough, really. You know, your results will tell you if you are or you're not. So just if I ask the question now, how often do you get, do you get what you predict you'll get? Just answer that quick question. How often do you kind of, you get all the things that you go, yeah, you know, that's going to happen. I told you that was going to happen. And how often do you then get it? Because that's kind of how it works. Just let me know in the comments there if you've, um, I don't know whether it, I can't see any comments. So, you know, just let me know how often have you kind of said, um, you know, that, that, uh, that program that I launched, that, that's not going to happen. It's going to be a flop and then you get, a, and then it becomes a flop. So, you know, it, that's the negative side. That's the negative side. So let me know if that's something that resonates with you. 
Now the great thing about this is it works both ways. So it's positive as well as negative. So if you are prepared to drop the stories, so changing your focus to positive, you will get positive results. Now before we do that, the first step is to realise the connection between the thoughts that you've got, these limiting thoughts that you, you're having, the stuff that you are actually holding on to, and the area in your life where you're getting these disappointing results for you. So when I gave the example of my client, there, you know, that was a, you know, she wasn't getting the results in her life regarding men, you know, with her relationships, with her partner. So look at areas of your life and, and let's uncover what's holding you back. What are you holding on to that you need to let go of? So, you know, again, for my client there, she would never have believed that actually the reason she wasn't getting the guys that she wanted to get was because of the guy from the disco when she was 10 years old. You know, you would never have put that down. So once you do that and you can let go of those stories, then you can shift to a new way of thinking that really empowers you to get the results that you want. So the first thing is to be really honest. Ask yourself those questions. Get really clear on what is true for you. What is it that you think? What do you feel? How are you limiting yourself? Ask yourself that question. Now you'll get all sorts of reasons, so write them down. So for example, some of the ones again that I've come across are, you know, things like, oh, well, I don't get, I don't stand up for myself. Um, I'm easily swayed by what others are doing and think, you know, and they, they think that I, I think that they're better than me. I don't follow through on what I say I'll do. I let myself down time after time. So just write that list now. Write that list. How do you now? And if you want to pop it in the comments, please feel free to put it in the comments. What, how are you limiting yourself? Hey, Sophie, lovely to see you. What are, you know, how are you limiting your, yourself now? What are the reasons that you're, you, you're, you're, you know, you're getting? And then I want you to ask yourself, what is that costing you? Look at those answers that you've just noticed, noted down and dig a bit deeper and think, what is the cost of me holding on to those thoughts? So again, in my client's case, she wasn't, she wasn't able to get her true love, her husband, her soulmate. That was the cost for her. And actually she was going through some pretty traumatic relationships leading up to that as well. You know, so ask yourself, what is this really costing me? You know, is it, it might be money. It might be that actually the, you know, when you are easily swayed by what others are doing, so you're not being authentic to you, it's actually costing you money in your business because you're not being visible as you, you're not being authentic as you. It could be that great relationship. It could be your health. So have a think about what is holding onto this stuff costing you. And then you're going to also do something uh, as well about what is it that you're focusing on now and what is it that you're getting. And I want you to do two columns with this. So on the left hand side, you're going to write down what you're focusing on. And then on the right hand side, what is it you're getting? So for instance, you could be focusing on how little time that you've got. And then the results of that are you just don't have enough time. You're, you're not spending time with your children. You're behind in everything and you feel out of control. Hey, Caroline, really lovely to see you. So on the left hand side, how little time that you have. And on the right hand side, you know, what is it that you're getting because of th that focus? What is it that you're thinking and worrying about? What are you really predicting for yourself? Is it success or is it failure? So just ask yourself, remember you get what you focus on. So what are you really focusing on right now? What are your deeper inner thoughts? And then begin to think about what you're getting as a result of the focus of your thoughts and feelings. Look at the answers on the left and think about what's happening in your life. 
Is it possible, for instance, that your relationships are a mirror of what you predict and therefore expect? You may even, you know, this is a, you know, again the way the mind plays tricks on us. You may even catch yourself saying to yourself, see, I told you, I told you I was right. But guess what? Being right and kind of backing up those stories won't get you the results. It's just your mind playing tricks on you because you can't prove yourself wrong, can you? So once you can acknowledge these are just stories and get back in touch with the real you, the real you that, you know, if your real desires of who you are meant to be deep down, rather than you pretending to be something, your inherent strength will come through. Your dreams are absolutely possible for you because you wouldn't have even thought them otherwise. And once you actually acknowledge that, that's when the fear and the doubt will start to dissolve. Before you consider what you want from next year, take time to do these mental and emotional um, exercises so that you can create the environment that you can succeed. You know, put yourself at the centre of your life. Create your world rather than letting your past or the current circumstances dictate your future success. And really just know that change is possible for you. And you are fully in control of that wheel. Remember, take control of that steering wheel. Explore that possibility. So every single day, write a list of the things that could happen if you let go of those shackles of the past. The things that are going to take you in the direction that you want to go. Write that list of how you can expand your life if you hadn't got this baggage behind you. And then focus on those, focus on those. Okay, so um, that is, I hope you found that useful today. I thought it was really quite appropriate with us coming up to Halloween. So I hope you've enjoyed that today. And before you go, well, first of all, please do let me know what your biggest takeaways were from today. You know, I really love to hear your stories um, of what you, what the biggest things are, you know, have a go at doing them and then come back to me and let me know which, you know, how you found it, what's worked for you. And um, so that, please do that, because I do read all your comments, do do that. But also I wanted to just say that unexpectedly I have got one space free, become free on my live one day women's business event. Now this has been by personal invitation. Um, so I've only actually extended this out to people I've done, uh, worked with before. It's a full event. It's on the 20th of November. Um, but literally yesterday I had, um, a place unexpectedly become available. Now this is live. So, you know, if you are not in the UK, um, then there's probably not a chance that you're able to come to this. So it is a live event. It's just £97 plus VAT for a full on day of coaching, training and networking with some fab like like minded women that are all prepared to transform their lives and go full out for success and doubling their business in 2022. So if you are interested, you've got to get in quick because I have sent a note to those people that are on it to see if they want to bring a friend, bring a buddy today because I've got this one place. So if you're interested in that, you've got to move quickly um, because it will be gone today. So it's just £97 plus VAT for that one. Drop me a note if you want that at that space. It's in Solihull. It's in a beautiful location. It's in a beautiful hotel. And this is literally, um, we're going to be doing lots of stuff, you know, so working on you, transforming you as well as making a plan for your business to make 2020 you the best year for you um, but I always like to throw a few other things in there so I'll throw a, some NLP some timeline therapy I'll be throwing in some a bit of woo woo stuff too I like to do some energy clearing um, so kind of that whole not just the strategy you will get a plan but it's all of the other stuff too. So if that's something that you're interested in, it's 20th of November, it's a Saturday, um, it's in Solihull, 
do let me know, but you have to move quickly on that one. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm off out now with my husband for lunch and we are going to, I'm taking the afternoon off today. So lovely to see you all and I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.